On Friday, April 27, 1973, a teenager left his home early in the morning for basketball practice at Downsview Secondary School. That morning, the grade 10 student decided to take a shorter route through an empty industrial lot that was filled with rocks and pebbles. As he walked through the area, located near Wilson Avenue and Keel Streets, he noticed pools of blood and came across the lifeless bodies of two young women. Terrified, he quickly fled the scene and ran to a nearby construction site. The police were called and they quickly arrived at the lot to find a horrific murder scene. The young women would eventually be identified as Donna Stern and Wendy Tedford. The 17-year-olds had been friends since grade six and no one ever expected that their lives would end so tragically. Donna and Wendy met when they were enrolled at C.W. Jeffries Secondary School and were described as being very close. They were your typical teenagers and enjoyed going out to movies, restaurants, and dancing. Both young women also attended the People's Church in Toronto, where Donna was a member of the church choir. Donna Stern was the second oldest child of Jack and Joan Stern. She had three siblings. Up until her tragic death, she had been a 12th grade student at Downsview Secondary School. Donna loved animals, and she planned to continue her education at university to become a veterinarian. She also planned to find a summer job and applied for a position as a counselor at the children's summer camp, a program offered by the People's Church. Wendy Tedford had suffered a tragic loss at a young age. She had been a student at C.W. Jeffries Secondary School. However, after her father passed away from cancer, Wendy dropped out of school and eventually left her mother's home. She moved in with her older sister, Shirley, and Shirley's four-year-old son. By all accounts, things had been going well for Wendy, and she was able to find employment at the now defunct Towers Department Store at their business office located on Orphis Road. She also had a boyfriend and was hoping to get married after she turned 18. Donna and Wendy were both very sociable young women who were described as inseparable. So it was not out of the ordinary for the both of them to spend an entire day together and stay out all night. On Thursday, April 26, 1973, Donna planned to spend the night at Wendy's place. She left home at approximately 7 p.m. that evening and arrived at Wendy's apartment at approximately 7.30 p.m. After leaving Wendy's apartment, the young women traveled to downtown Toronto where Wendy purchased a sweater for her sister at a store located in the Young and College area. The two then traveled by transit to Yorkdale Shopping Centre. They would spend a few hours shopping before heading to Sit and Eat, a popular restaurant located at Keelgate and Wilson. One witness recalls seeing Donna and Wendy around 11 o'clock p.m. at the restaurant, but no one saw them leave. When Donna and Wendy did not return home that evening, no one was really concerned as it was not unusual for the two friends to stay out late. However, when Wendy's sister Linda did not hear from her sister the following day, she called Tower's head office where Wendy was employed. She was told that her sister did not show up for work. 
Linda then called the police and reported that her sister and Donna were missing. It was early that morning on Friday, April 27, 1973, when a teenage boy who took a shortcut through an empty lot on his way to school found the bodies of two young women. The bodies would later be identified as that of Donna Stern and Wendy Tedford. Both victims had been shot to death at close range. Donna was lying face up and had been shot once in the back of the head. She was just a foot away from her friend Wendy. Wendy had been shot through the neck twice and was face down. Semen was found at the scene. In a 2018 YouTube video, Wendy's sister Linda Harris described the days following the murder of her sister and her best friend Donna. Linda revealed that she could not bring herself to identify her sister's body. Another relative identified Wendy and told Linda that she had been beaten black and blue. In an interview following her daughter's tragic death, Wendy's mother revealed that her daughter had a premonition that she and her friend Donna would be shot and killed while hitchhiking. According to the article, Wendy wrote about the premonition. The document was later examined by police. The murders of Donna and Wendy bore a striking resemblance to Wendy's premonition. Donna's and Wendy's funeral service was held at the People's Church. It was a large gathering with about 400 people in attendance. Donna and Wendy's killer has never been found. A year after the murders of Donna Stern and Wendy Tedford, a revolver was found discarded on the side of a highway near Windsor, Ontario. Police were able to determine that the revolver was used to murder Donna and Wendy. It was also used in a break and enter in Windsor, Ontario, prior to Donna's and Wendy's murder. No links to other crimes have been established and the owner has not been identified. April 24, 2021 marks 48 years since the bodies of Donna Stern and Wendy Tedford were found. Over the years, the police have interviewed hundreds of individuals. Although the case is cold, it is not forgotten and police are still investigating the murders. They have DNA evidence and the killer's ancestry is being examined. When a loved one is murdered, wounds remain unhealed. This is especially true when murders go unsolved. Donna and Wendy's families are still awaiting the arrest and conviction of the person or persons involved in this crime. The Toronto Police have posted information regarding the unsolved murders of Donna Stern and Wendy Tedford on their website. Links to this information are provided below in the description box of this video. There is also a link to Linda Harris's YouTube video in the description box. If you have any information regarding this cold case, please contact the Toronto Police. Their contact information is listed on the screen and in the description box below. I hope that you found this case as interesting as I did. 
I will be posting more videos featuring Canadian crimes and mysteries. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to subscribe.